And we're back to learning Inkscape and this time I'm going to show you how to use the Stitch sub half effect. Once you've understood the concept, it's easy to create abstract shapes with it. Let us create a circle holding control and using the ellipse tool, I give it a stroke color and no fill with the bottom menu. So hold shift, click on the swatch to give it a stroke and click on the X to get rid of the fill. Control D, size it down, holding shift and control, select it all, path combine and then path and path effects. And there you've got the Stitch sub paths. Just click on it. You may want to increase the number of paths. I'll just use 100 here. And then click on the notes icon. If you can't find this diamond shape, you may have to zoom out a little bit to find it. There it is. I reposition it. You can drag it, make it bigger, or just hover over it until you see this hand icon. And then you can give it a curvature and play around with the handles. And the stitch sub path effect gives us a very easy way to create these abstract shapes. You can then play around with the fill and the stroke. If you've got overlaps, it creates interesting effects with the fill. If you don't have these overlaps, so when you don't create these curves that create these overlaps, with the notes tool, you want to stay away from the fill color. You can also give it a gradient and make sure it's a gradient for the stroke. As I said, if you don't have overlaps, you can't really affect the fill anymore because the fill would overlap all of these stroke elements. You can adjust the gradient under fill and stroke. You don't necessarily have to just use a circle, you can use any shape. Let us just pick the erect angle, I press Ctrl D to copy it, both are selected. No fill, just a stroke. We close this, so it's two elements, once again I select it, path and combine, and then path effects. And there it is once again, the stitch sub paths, increase the number of paths. Click on the notes tool, zoom until you find this icon, and then play around with it. What you don't want to do is to use such an element, so the so one that you have already affected with this stitch sub paths effect, and then copy it and use two of these elements to create your basic unit. If you then apply the stitch sub path effect again, it's going to crash your CPU, so don't do it like this, so copy path combine and then again use it. It's just too much to process for Inkscape, so stick to the basic shapes, but as long as you stick to them, you can use any of these shapes and play around with it until you've got an abstract object that you like. And this I can use this stitch subpath effect in Inkscape. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.